We're off to such a good start because you know how technical we want to be just perfect on this. <laughs> hey, we're back on track this week. I'm back in Florida. You're in California. We're actually doing a watch party. I'm feeling a sense of back to my norm a little bit. <laughs> we're back on the trail again. There we go. There we go. Hence, whoops, I went the wrong way. And so we're all, we're both on the wagon train today. <laughs> you, you recognize that guy right there? Yeah, is that you? Is that little bitty you? <laughs> That's me. Now, did, are you on that wagon train? See? I'm we, not on the, I'm just, I live vicariously. We got the same hat though. <laughs> hat, though. We kind of do. We're ready. <laughs> wow. Hey, Tony Gill is here. Tony. Let me pull, let me pull him up here to see if he can chat with us. Ladies and gentlemen, Tony Gill, where and, is he? And for what, if Tony is an introduction, Tony is Bob Fuller, who we all know it's Bob's birthday today. Uh, Called call him up, we had a great conversation today and everything. And Tony is just like his right hand man. Now see, if you had told me Tony was coming up, I would have pulled up Tony pictures. You have Tony pictures? I, I won't ask why you have Tony pictures. <laughs> <laughs> now <I> Darby. <laughs> I wouldn't pull up those Tony pictures. Ooh. Tony's not going to come on. He's scared of what we're talking about. Well, oh, there's there the man. Is. The man, the legend. Ladies and gentlemen, Tony Gill from the United Kingdom. Is he wearing a purple hat? Are you there? No, no it's... <laughs> no, I... no, it looks... It looks purple, but it, it's brown. It's actually it's brown. It's well, those, brown. Those English, you can just I think them. it's the light. It's the light. <laughs> but I look like a, I look like a dancing girl. <laughs> I know you can't, Dabby, you can't take us anywhere. <laughs> Tony, you're the only one hey, I know. I'm really sorry. I, I don't have a I don't have a background like you guys. You got the Western background. I just got DVDs. No, but you do have a purple hat, and <laughs> and you're like one of the only yeah, ones that I know. I pull off a purple hat. So I gotta hand it to you there, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> I can't, I can't believe it's purple, but it, it's brown. I'm telling you, it's brown. <laughs> you know, by coincidence, pure coincidence, because Ginger, Ginger sort of contacted me and said you're doing this thing, but pure coincidence. I get out my Daniel Boone DVDs today. Absolutely promise you, pure coincidence. So I'm watching you in Daniel Boone and Ginger contacts me and says, we're doing this thing. So life is so funny. It really is. I can't oh. believe it. So, you know, have another oh. drink. <laughs> Here's to you, Tony. Thanks for coming so in. So how are you guys doing? And I was just, I was just- My pleasure. I'm just getting through introducing you for for those of you that don't know Tony. I mean, he even made it into my book. That's where, and I might have to go get a picture because it'd be easier than trying to find it in, on the computer. Um, but uh, Tony uh, is there. He he's Bob's right hand man, um, and he's ju just a joy to be with. And I've had a lot of fun with him, and uh, it's great. I, I'm glad. How's everything going in the UK? Well, it's just gone midnight here, man. So I hope this only a five minute show because I'm just ready to crash it. <laughs> no, it's good. It's good in the UK. Uh, we, we're the same, you know, everywhere. Now we're suffering from the same things, but I don't even want to think about that. Life is good, Darby. I tell you, man, we're having a good time and just getting on with things the way we have to do. And I totally agree with you, and I love it, and I hopefully will get to see you in uh, Williamsburg. Um, that'll be fun. That's November or something, I think. Um, so that'll be November. Um, yeah, I'm planning. You know, you know, I want to. Be, I'm planning on being there, but at the moment, people from the UK can't travel to America. We're not allowed to come in. So I'm just kind of hoping. Over the three, four, five weeks, that's going to change. And then I'm hoping to get to America in September, start putting the team together for Williamsburg, you know, the fandom team. Um, 
But I don't know what's going to happen, but heck, <laughs> I can't do anything about it. So I'm just going to take it as it comes. But, you know, I'm planning to be there. And if I can't be there in body, I'll be there in spirit. You or know. spirit. And I and I heard that and I heard that Monday the UK is finally going to let Americans back in. So you know, yeah. that, I thought we can hope yeah. we all uh, get back. The, next week we're letting Americans back in with no quarantine if you double jabbed. So they, you know, welcome back, guys. You know, come on in. Hey, you kicked us out and we're letting you in. I just don't know where the justice is in that. Oh, listen, that's that's a big relief because you know I got relatives there and my daughter and everything. So, like I said, that's a good thing. Let's just look at the positive that hopefully this thing gets under control and uh, blows over. It's certainly time for it to, and uh, we all get back to really. Everything. And thank you for being here on Bob's birthday. Yeah, this is really fun. And I know you're a tired guy, so we have a show here that might put you to sleep. I don't know. I have not seen this. Okay, maybe I watched it when I was five years old, but I don't remember any of it. The only thing I know about this show and this episode are pictures that my mom put up uh, that I found in boxes and stuff. So we're going to show a little episode of Wagon Train, and uh, you're more than welcome to join us. But it's sure good talking to you, buddy. It's good to see you both again, you know, really. I'm looking forward to Williamsburg to getting together with everybody. And serious note, Derby, a serious note. You cannot get, a, I'm sure the English people are going to kill me, you cannot get a good steak in England. You can't do it. So I need to get some steak, some potato, some gravy. What can I tell you? <laughs> We'll, we'll have a big one, that's for sure. That I'm be. sure. Well, before we lose Tony, though, can you tell us a little bit about how successful your Robert Fuller birthday campaign went this year? You know, it, it really, really is unbelievable, the power of Robert Fuller. Um, I'm a big fan. All my life, I've been a big fan of Bob Fuller, and it's an, uh, it's an honor and it's a privilege to uh, to manage his fan club and his website. Every year, the fan club, which is the fandom, puts together a birthday card. Uh, and when when COVID came round, you, you can imagine we put this birthday card together. It's like a book, and I was sending it to him every year. When COVID came around, we took a decision to stop doing hard copy because you weren't supposed to send stuff in the mail. We do it online. I never thought about it, but it gave us so many more opportunities to do other things. So we decided to do a birthday movie where people could film clips and send them to me and I'd put them together in a movie nice. and they would have to pay money nice. to do this. But the money went to Robert's charities. So we didn't we weren't taking money out of this. Everybody paid. They could pay what they wanted. Minimum 10 bucks, but they could pay whatever they wanted above that. This year, I'm telling you, this year, uh, well, give me an example. Last year, we raised $2,400 for Robert's Chosen Charities. This year, we raised $7,000. Wow. All those charities went direct to those charities. So it's been mega, absolutely mega. Yeah. And it, it really is to the, to, the, to the girls and guys in the fund. They, they, they put up this money. We put a card together online. It's got over 300 greetings. I spoke to Robert tonight. He told me tonight he was reduced to tears, seeing all of the love and the generosity for the people. He was reduced to tears with it. Um, and it, it, it touched me to almost reduce me to tears listening to it. But, you know, it's been a, it has been a tremendous success. And it's driven by, by Robert's fans. He's got 5,000 fans in his fandom. He retired 20 years ago. Go, you know, go figure. Um, so, yeah, we, we, it figure. has been an amazing success. And I can figure. He's Bob. He's great. You know, I talked to him today, too. And, uh, you know, just the connection he has with the fans. And he's always there and hugging on him and all. And, and that's why it's rough for us uh, what we're going through. And the other thing I got to say 
is I love that you brought him into the modern world. Like you say, you know, bringing him online and the fan club and doing everything else. I know you're in England and everything, but you're really choppy. You're freezing a lot. And you're the guy that's helping him do it. He still has a flip phone. He wanted to say hi to the darling he be here for his birthday, but <laughs> you can imagine Bob on his rants. He doesn't have any connection, and uh, that's why he's not here to say hi. I'm like, oh, well, I'll tell you. No, yeah, yeah. I'll tell you something. Tell you something. Hot news. He's just got a new phone, and Darby. It's a flip phone. <laughs> so he's got this phone, and he said, and he's, he'll kill me if you, but he, 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 he wants to put a good ringtone on it. He does not do it yet. So I've got to do that when I get out there, put a decent ringtone on. Yeah, don't worry. I really don't think he's online. <laughs> Watch it. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I just, I do want to say, I do want to say um, on behalf of him and all of the fans, really, thanks for doing this. You know, it's a, it's a great tribute to do this on his, on his birthday. It's very, really nice of you to do it and to take the trouble to do it. And um, I'm well, looking for, to stealing your idea well, about this. I mean, this is a great idea. I've got to steal this. Well, well, <laughs> I don't have any ideas. I steal ideas. And this is one of the better ones. Well, well, Tony, listen, talking about stealing, you were there and you know. The whole way Darby's Darlings came about was because of Fuller's Phillies. And, you know, I asked him, yeah. can I have some of the girls? So it was from the fandom and that little group of the Phillies that the Darby's Darlings were born. So I love it. Um, you know, it's just great. And you go ahead, steal away. Because I want to steal your ideas. Next <laughs> time I might have a purple <laughs> And I'll be the dancing girl. I'll be <laughs> you know you can have this one. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. I only how, tell me, tell me something. How, how, how come you two are doing this? You two are doing this together. Are you two... You, you kind of set this up and you do... What, well, tell me about it a little bit. Because I don't know. Well, if we told you, we'd have to kill you, Tony, and we really like you, so we don't give away our I'm sure some of the darlings can just fill you in. <laughs> this, yeah, it just, very, very quickly, it happened during the quarantine. You know, the darlings used to be a closed group, and uh, we, we just opened it up to try to, to uh, connect with people and have it since we weren't out there hugging and seeing people in person. And we set it up on Thursday at 7.30 on the East Coast because that's when Daniel Boone aired for all those years. So we do it 4.30 West Coast, 7.30. You know, if we did it 7.30 West Coast, I just think it'd be too late for people. Um, so we, this is the time slot. And I always try to check in. We do these fun little viewing parties and, you know, just to try to make people laugh and have a good time. What we do, uh, just uh, so you know, I Darby. You certainly do that. I think it's a it's a brilliant <laughs> idea. I'm sorry, Ginger. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. You're our guest, so go ahead. No, I, I was just saying. I, I I think it is a brilliant idea. I think anything that promotes what you guys did in you know all those years ago and that's lived for so long and it's actually revitalized now. On, do you know something? On TV in England now, I promise you, we have black. It's not Daniel Boone, it's not Laramie, it's not Bonanza, it's not Gunsmoke, but we have Black Saddle, we have Law of the Plainsman, we have now we have Stagecoach West, all showing Zane Gray Theatre, we have all showing on, on TV in the UK. And there's more, I can't think of them, but you know it, it, that's pretty impressive when you think of this is like 60 years ago that these shows aired and that's really impressive it is and tony i i look to you to, to get daniel boone airing in england so i have a good excuse to come there and uh, do a show there. <laughs> now, i take that challenge i'm going to take that challenge Darby, and let's see what we can do i have no clue how to start but you know 
The smallest, the, the biggest journey starts with a small step. That's it, and you're my small step, buddy. <laughs> so what time will this finish? Because I need to go to bed. We're going to start. We should start now. How long have we been? Probably about two hours. The show's an hour and 10 minutes, and then we take breaks and talk, and it totally depends on how much we have. Apparently, how much I have to say, so. <laughs> okay. Well, I'll, I'll hang in as long as I can. I'm going to, when you're showing the show, I might go and get a different hat, because this is particular. <laughs> you just need to fix the filters on your Zoom is what you need to do. Oh, <laughs> I don't know. How don't to worry, do Tony. That. Stick with us. We'll uh, we'll bring you into the modern century. Don't worry. <laughs> and here, I want to show you. How, I want to show you how technical I am. I have these are going to be our guests next Thursday. These two sisters, Angela and Veronica Cartwright, that uh, uh, from the show and stuff. So we're going to be able to get to see and talk with them. So. Oh, wow. Wow. We can awesome. Awesome. Wow. Both of them, yeah. yes. <laughs> I, I tell you what, Sister. you know, little guy with Veronica Cartwright. I was a little guy in England with Veronica Cartwright. She was my heroine, I'm telling you. <laughs> well, with the alien stuff, yeah, she, she's great act. Such a great actress. Wonderful. We have a lot of fun together. Yeah, really. All right, Ginger, we can't put him, we, he's got to go to bed, so we better start this. All right, well, you know I have to do all my announcements. So first of all, I did want to address that t t they were talking about the fandom, that no, the Robert Fuller fandom is up to 5,000. But you have grown in a year from 608 fans on our group to 913 today. So we're almost at 1,000, so yay! Hey, there you so, go. Wow. <laughs> so then we have to say, right. well, why Robert Fuller versus you? You're both cowboys. Um, you he's, both he's were on TV shows. Charming, more. Uh... No, can you can you dr quick draw a gun? Maybe that's the problem. Yeah. <laughs> or can you hop in the saddle like he does? I don't know. I'm trying to figure out what what <laughs> what's he got that you ain't got, baby. So we. <laughs> Go up to 5,000. It's all in the saddle. Well, thank you. Thank you. I don't have, I guess I don't have Tony behind me uh, helping the fan to where they go. Oh, there. Darby, suddenly we go black. <laughs> <laughs> I told, you that, told you this cowboy world is a chauvinistic world. You men, you all stick together, but it's the ladies that keep it going. Just remember that. I know. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you keep telling yourself, just keep telling yourself. Well, I know in Darby's fandom, 75% of them is women and 25% is dudes, so. You're, you're talking to no, the guy who No, no, we're about the same now. <laughs> oh, is that about what yours break is, too? You're, you're talking to a guy who's yeah. Yeah, we, we, one of two older sisters. You don't think I know who rules the world? Come on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, listen. Uh, I'm a single, Darby. I'm single. I don't need to. I don't need to worry. I'm not scared of anybody. <laughs> Men rule the world. <laughs> oh, seriously. We have a, we Suddenly, have Tony a disappears. <laughs> <laughs> I was wrong. I was wrong. Um, the, I'm sorry, we I'm have sorry, about seventy-five percent. <laughs> we have about the same profile as Darby group about 75, 25. But funnily enough, when we started, you know, uh, whew, when we came on Facebook, we had about seven, maximum 700 members, 95% female, 5%, max 5 male. But I think, you know, the show is back on TV. Laramie is back on TV. Wagon, is Daniel Boone back on TV now, Darby, or is, or is it not? Yeah. yeah. I don't know when it was. Yeah, you see, that's the fuel. Yeah. That's the fuel. Put it back on TV. That's the fuel. That's where you're going to get younger people, people who have never seen the show before, people who remember the show. That's the fuel, and it'll bring people in. Your your group will just grow exponentially with, uh, with Daniel back on 
PB. And Ginger, I heard it's going to start playing in England. Tony. I did. Wow. Tony Gill's on it. It's going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> he almost did a spit take. I love it. Uh, my name. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Darby. Thank you. <laughs> well, anyways, as Darby said, I guess we should get rolling here. Our first segment is going to be 23 minutes long because uh, this episode is actually an hour and 10 minutes. So we're going to break it up into three segments. A uh, little bit of information. This wagon train episode is from season seven. It was episode 26. It's called The Ben Engel Story. The director was Joseph Pevney. The writer was Betty Andrews a woman, just saying, uh, <laughs> and it guest stars Clue Gulliger, a fan favorite from the Mid-South Nostalgia Festival, um, and Darby Hinton. And incidentally, this air date of this was March 16th, 1964. Uh, for you, Darby, there's Clue. There's for, you, Clue. for you, Darby, Daniel Boone's season one, episode one, aired September 24th, 1964. So this aired in March, and then you were on Daniel Boone by September. So this was the same year. Yeah, this is the one where my tooth, I lost my tooth halfway through this, and they had to make me a false flapper. And that's what, oh, that's a whole other story, but that's one of the things that helped get me the part of Israel. So yeah, I went right from that to this. I, I remember that now. I think you'll be remembering a lot of things. <laughs> I know, give me so many things. I remember that now. All right, let's start the show. All right, so Tony, if you do want to come back, all we ask you to do, make sure you mute your microphone and stop your video just so we just have full screen of the camera. If you don't do it, I'll do it for you, but I'm going to oh, give Do you it the... for me. I don't know how to do it. You do it for me. I'm going to, listen, I'm going to try and stay with it as long as I can. If, I, if, if the camera comes on, I'm asleep, just yell. I'll be fine. <laughs> Well, Tony, it's great to see you. We are happy that you popped in here and gave us the news about Robert Fuller. Please tell him from the Darby's Darlings that we all love him and uh, happy birth, happy 88th birthday, the magic snowman number. Thank you. And, <laughs> and to stay safe and that we hope we get back to the convention world again because everybody needs those Darby and Bob Fuller hugs for sure to sustain us. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Well said. Well said, Ginger. Well said. All right, so let's get rolling with Wagon Train, the Ben Engel story. Try to keep it out of sight, will you? But you said that later. Right now, I want you to smile. Do what? You heard me. Follow me. Smile. Well, 
flooded. How high? Too high, Chris. Harris Ford? No. Nope. And the... How long? Uh, at least two days for the water to go down. And there's always the... Mud. Yeah. I hate to stop a train. The wagon train can't move, there's trouble. Well, the Indians around here are peaceful enough. I don't mean trouble from the outside. The trouble's right over there. They bring it with them. You ever stand beside a stagnant pool dying for a drink? As you looked at the scum and smelled the stench you didn't dare drink because it'd make you sick? Yeah. Well, what do you think poisoned the water in that pool? Wasn't anything brought in from the outside, it's just water. Well, it makes up water. Poison came from not being able to move. Now let's go stop it. So we'll pull up the Ben Angle supply wagons in that opening right over there for a better windbreak. That's all right, Mr. Angle. Oh, certainly, Mr. Hale. Get them started, Duke. All right. So that'll put the Angle wagon and Harry Deal's wagon in the same relative position in the circle up. Mr. and Mrs. Jenks will move up, the cloud behind them, so on down the line. Now, with the bluffs behind us and the wagons out there, we should be pretty well sheltered. Looks like it might clear up for too long. Indians are all peaceful, so we'll settle down for a spell. All right, I guess that's all, folks. You can get back to your wagons now. What you got there, Charlie? My whooshing book for rainy days. Ain't you got one? No. Everybody should have a whooshing book. Well, how does it work? Well, right now I'm whooshing for my gout to get better, but you can whoosh for anything. Here's it, Danny. Listen to here. Fill your own teeth kit, complete dental outfit, pearl fillings and all that, instructions too. Oh, you got a toothache? Here's one too, buttermilk shaving stick. I can almost smell that, can't you? Oh, you're not gonna shave, are you? And here's a dandy, a potato masher. Every housewife should have what it says. It's a must. Let me see that magazine. Well, give me my book. Well, this is a ladies magazine. I don't care if it's a ladies magazine or not. Why don't you send for Mrs. Graham's cucumber and elder flower cream? Give me that book. As nourishing to the skin as dew is to the flower. The skin will be as pink, as velvety, as pure as the most delicious baby's skin. Give me that book. How about that? Duke, huh? go rouse out Fiddler John. See how good he is on the chicken reel. All right. Barney, see if you can find that uh, fellow, what's his name, plays the mouth organ? Uh, Eustace? Yeah, get him together with Fiddler John, see what kind of music he can make. Bill, huh. go over there and unload enough lumber for a dance platform. Right. Charlie? Yes, sir. Check your sweetening supply. See if you can spare enough to make a batch of taffy. Yes, sir. I miss Chris, you couldn't hold this dance off till my gal gets better, could you? No, I couldn't. You can sit out there and do the calling. You're a menace on the floor anyway. Are well, we gonna have a real party, Mr. Chris? Oh, well, we real as we can make it. Well, let's go, Barney. Me and my gal. Must be the rich food you're eating, Charlie. How rich food you off? Get out of here. Huh. Hold it, boy, hold it. Something wrong someplace. Start over again. Let me smell it. I didn't give you leave to use a whole bottle, did I? You little... Oh! oh, oh, oh. Here, here, here. Take it back. I'll handle that. Go get some more lanterns, will you? To the wagon and all take a ride. Jump into the wagon. Take it in the pan, scratch and gravel. All my pants are in new pants. H. A. R. R. 
<laughs> well, well, well. <laughs> Harry Deal instead of Ben Engel, huh? <laughs> That's why you've been uh, bellying up the old man, huh? Fetching every stick he throws and wagging your tail. <laughs> you fixing to take over, huh? Well, 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 now that clears things up a bit. It does. Yeah, you bet it does. You know, I've been uh, wondering about you this whole trip. I was beginning to think maybe I was wrong. But uh, Mac McCloud ain't often wrong about things like that. I knew the moment I first laid eyes on you, the kind you was. Mm. What kind is that? My kind. Oh! Fancier, maybe, more class, higher tone, but my kind, all the same. Mm. You sure about that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so sure that we're going to form a little partnership. Now, don't, don't pretend that you're surprised. <laughs> You've been waiting for it. <laughs> and look, deal. I don't know how you're gonna get these wagons away from the old man, but I know you are. Unless, of course, uh, I let the cat out of the bag and spoil your time. You know, uh, the stuff in those wagons should bring a pretty penny. Pretty penny. <laughs> All I'm asking is, uh, Whatever you think it's worth for me to keep the puckering string on that little old cat bag nice and tight. <laughs> I told you. I told you it was the same kind. <laughs> so you did. <laughs> well. Is it a deal, Mr. Deal? <laughs> it's a deal. <laughs> you know, that's what I like about Gentlemen like us. <laughs> we can do business and still be friends. Oh, see, uh, Matt's rounded up a new sucker for tonight's game. You join us? I think I will, yeah. Take it in the batter, soft and dripping. Good step back to the gal, come get it. Uh, your husband like parties? Oh, he'll be here. Well, if he wouldn't mind, I'd like the pleasure. Certainly. Well, Mr. Deal, your roll. How much? Two hundred. I'll cover you. Roll. Seven. You're covered. Eleven. Well, wait. You know what that is? Mm. Worth more than two, right? How about another hundred and fifty?
drop the liquor. Gals get back in a man come kick it. He shot him. Go get him. He, he shot McLeod. Who did? Just like a rabbit, like he was nothing more than a rabbit. He shot McLeod. Who shot him? Deal, Harry, deal. Well, let, let's go. Jim Jackie man. I tell you, he just pulled out his gun and shot him. No one on this train is safe with a man like that on the loose. Harry. It didn't make no difference to him at all whether Mac lived or died. Well, you got him. Where was he running to? He wasn't running. He was in his wagon. He was just waiting. Well, running or not, you found him. Now, before we left on this trek, you said you was the law. You made a big point about you being the law out on the prairie. Well, we've had a crime. Let's have some law. We'll have some law, but first we'll have some justice. Justice? Well, he's a killer. You don't need any more than that rope for this. Anybody can shoot like that. Wasn't shooting for the first time. Of course, it wasn't the first time. What was that? It wasn't the first time. I don't know what the rest of you were doing between 61 and 65, but... Well, I was fighting a war. He was a hero in that war. What's that? I said Harry Deal was a hero in the war, and he has a medal to prove it. Yeah. The medal was for bravery, Mr. Hale. Harry, where is it? I'll go find it. Please, every Mr. Hale doesn't care about what happened in the war. I care very much what happened in the war. And I do now. If it'll help me reach a decision. Decision? I've already told you! He shot Mac without any reason! There's always a reason. What difference does it make? You can see how this is going to go. Well, if he can, he's got better eyes than I have. Now, what happened exactly? He shot Mac before he shot. Harry, you have to talk. I'm going to look for the medal. Well, Matt there had just lost a lot of money, and... Uh, you were a loser? Yeah. He was very angry about it. Heavy loser? Yeah. And he made a grab at McLeod, and... You were fighting with McLeod? He'd won every cent I had, but... I didn't shoot him. I, I didn't even have a gun. That's right. I had the gun, and I take the blame. But why, Harry? You have to tell us why. Now, did you have anything against Mr. McLeod? No, no, I... I really didn't even know him. I... Had you lost to him, too? No, he'd won. I thought they were in cahoots. I sure acted like they were in cahoots over something. I told you I didn't even have a gun. Mr. Hale, I think I can piece this out. Harry, now listen to me. They were fighting, and you took out your gun. Is that right? Yes. And you meant to frighten them. But they didn't stop fighting. They kept right on. So you fired around, not meaning to hit anyone, but just to make them stop fighting. And then Mr. McLeod, he uh, probably got in the way, maybe from a blow or... No! I found it. You see, Mr. Hale, beyond the call of duty. You know where it was? Benji had it in his toy box. Mr. Hale, I think it more than likely that what's happened here has been an accident, a most unfortunate accident. Now, if you'll suspend judgment, I will personally be responsible for Harry Deal. 
And I'll pledge myself to his good behavior. I realize you have to maintain strict discipline here. But Mr. McLeod is not dead. And I sincerely... I'll nurse him, Mr. Hale. I'll nurse him like he was my own. Well, you have some very good people as supporters, Deal. Hey, Deal. What battle did you get this for? <clears throat> battle of the Wilderness. What'd you do, kill yourself a regiment? Not quite. More like a platoon. <laughs> <laughs> Which battle of the wilderness? Seconds. Where in a second? Plank Road. You know it? Yeah, I've heard of it. A war hero with a medal from the president. Ain't an ordinary killer. No. Say not. I should say not. What's a medal got to do with this? Both of you brawling and drunk. What's that got to do with him shooting Mac? Well, Mr. Hale? If you're willing to be responsible for his actions, we'll let it go as it is for the time being. But if McLeod dies, that's something else again. I'll have to take him into custody and he'll have to stand trial, either here or in Sacramento. Uh, Mr. Hale. Uh, will he die, do you think? I don't know. Hmm. Was he, uh, was he conscious? No. Uh, not at all? Not at all. I'll miss him the best I can, Harry. And we'll all pray for his recovery. Yes. Yes. We'll all pray. Ben, will you see to Benji? Mrs. Mills will take care of him as long as necessary, Miss Deal. I better go get some things. And uh, you gentlemen can get that wagon tongue back where it belongs. Seeing you've got so much energy to expend, you can get over when you finish with that, over to that dance platform and help dismantle it. Chris. You want me for something, Coop? Well, I'm not sure. Now hold it. I'm trying to get sure. I was in the second battle of the wilderness. You knew Harry Deal? Well, I, I knew of him, I think. He wasn't a war hero, huh? No, he was a hero, all right. If killing your enemies makes you a hero. You don't think it does? I think it matters how you kill, or how you feel when you kill. Well, if this is going to be a philosophical discussion, Coop, we better make it some other time. I don't want our self-appointed judges changing their minds. Now, wait a minute, Chris. I was flat on my back in a hospital after the wilderness. A man flat on his beside me was a Yankee. A Scotty. Well, he was as scotch as plaid bagpipes. He told me about a man in his outfit. Oh, a big hero, he said. A man that thought of killing like another man thinks about a woman. It was an excitement to him. A, a destroying joy. Scotty called him Mr. Devil. I remember he said to me, you see, Cooper, his first name was Harry, but that was just a nickname for the fiend. His last name was the very word itself, as we speak it in Scotland. Teal. Is that devil in Scottish? No. Harry Deal. Well, it could be just a coincidence. And what if it isn't? Coop, all we have to be concerned with is what happens right here on this wagon train, not something that happens some other place, some other time. Well, I've known men like your Scotty described. Seems like destruction reassures them somehow. Reassures them? By contrast, they have to kill to feel alive. They have to destroy something to realize it. Why do they let a man that evil be loose? Why can't they put them away? Because the rest of us use them, that's why. The business of the day is war, and the business of war is killing, and somebody likes to kill, and he comes in very handy. Now, if we can only get 
this wagon train moving. Unless you put the name on it, Coop, evil. Since the beginning of time, man's dealt with evil by running from it. Is that an answer? It wasn't meant to be an answer. Just a way to keep from having to answer. What can a man like Ben Engel see in Harry Deal? Just what he wants to see. You know, Coop, if a man doesn't run from evil, the other thing he can do is believe it isn't there. He could face it. Yeah. But then he has to do something about it. And that's hard. Oh, yes, Coop, read your history. That's hard. Oh, oh. Here he comes. Oh, well, we kept his I'm interest. Here. No, I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> I've changed hat and it's still purple. But crying out loud, it's still purple. Is every hat I wear purple? <laughs> We're just gonna call you. We're just gonna call you Don't Prince Tony. <laughs> Prince Tony. <laughs> no, you know what I did. I didn't think. I didn't think. I changed my brown cowboy hat for a brown ball cap, and it's still purple. <laughs> you know, you're just doing that purple oh, no. all English thing. We got it. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> Boy, I gotta say, Robert, a handsome man. Looking pretty good in this, including. Yeah, you're right. But I, watching that show, it was absolutely littered with um, re a really strong cast of actors who appeared in Western. They weren't they weren't stars of shows, but they were solid acts. Like in seeing the lecture cook there seen Whit Bissell there. These these guys turned up time and time and time again in really, really good westerns. And there they were doing a great job again. It's just it's incredible. I mean you just I'm I i do not want to be one of these granddaggers, but you just do not see that nowadays. You really don't. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well and everybody wanted to do the show because like you said it's longer than an hour. This was almost like a movie on TV. It was very uh, ahead of its time, I guess. But you're right. It didn't stay. It didn't stay that length, though. You know, it went back to one hour black and white. Go figure. So Peggy and Nicole said, oh, obviously, while well, Bob's leg was broken, is that why he was sitting? He had a broken leg. I don't think he did because the Ben Engel story aired before the San Diego Casada story. San Diego Casada is where he broke his leg. Ben Engel was uh, uh, three or four before that. So I don't think he had a broken leg. And, he, and also he was riding his horse. And, and there's one scene in the segment we've just seen where Bob is walking. I don't think, I think he broke his leg after that. How is he still moving? He is a great ventriloquist. Did you ever know this about Tony? I'm telling you, this is in honor of the Olympics. He's speaking <laughs> Japanese. <laughs> can you? <laughs> can you? Did you hear me? <laughs> we, we, we heard you, but you're like, your mouth is like 20 seconds behind from whatever you said. <laughs> well, that's whiskey that's nothing to do with the camera that's the whiskey <laughs> that's airwaves traveling across the pond and i'm saving the one with the uh the skull on it for you there when you come oh man really <laughs> i'll take a slug of that Oh, uh, this western getting better and better. I gotta tell you. Did you see me dance? <laughs> Did you see me dancing on the floor? That was... We get to hear you singing this one too. We, I'm gonna have a lot more. Do you, have you got? Do you have lines in this one, Darby? Yes, he does. Yes, I do. You do. Okay, 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 okay. Yeah, I'm looking forward to just that. Just wait yeah. for it. Just wait for <laughs> it. They've been playing hey, Darby. He sing. Whoa, the scary part. I thought the only time I sang was on the Boone show 
when I was going fishing singing bullhead catfish Mr. Trout, um, which evidently just popped up on the Merv Griffin interview that we did and had fun with. Um, and now I found out that I sang in this too. And from the little bit of a clip that somebody sent me, it's about my level of singing. Let me just put it that way. Bobby Sherman didn't have anything to worry about. Well, well hold on there, partner, because you sang, kind of sang, in the Daniel Boone I watched, because it was the one, um, Doll of Sorrow, Doll of Sorrow. And uh, who's the guy Who's the guy that played the store owner with the long hair? Cincinnati. You, you remember him? Yeah. Cincinnati. yeah. He's, he's doing this dancing thing and he's doing this song and, and Israel joins him and Veronica joins him too in, in this song. And, uh, and so you do this song sitting on his lap. So and he, uh, uh, you don't do a lot of singing, but you do a little bit of in there, you know, it's good. I think it's good. I think in the ginger, there's an album, there's an album on the horizon. <laughs> The first Starlinger dude that can tell me what episode he's talking about, because I sure don't remember it, I'll send you off a picture. Just told you episode it was. Doll of Sorrow. All right, Darby, there's a question I for think you. We'll get you singing at Williamsburg. <laughs> All right, Cassie Turner says, Darby, do you remember anything of significance happening during the shooting of this show? What about Michael Burns? The one. Um, like when I was on the dance floor, I kind of remembered that. But this is the picture that gets me every time. Clue's sitting there pointing at my mom, like, get the woman with the camera off the set because she was taking pictures because that's what my mom did. And somebody posted earlier on, you know, well, I'm sure, why would he say that? And I got to say, because for an actor, it is very dis disruptive to have somebody with a camera on the set. Um, the only time that I can really remember throwing a fit on the set was when I was filming in Romania. And they were used to dubbing everything in Romania, so sound didn't matter. And there was the still guy that would just sit there with his shutter and take all these pictures while we were doing the scene. And I would tell him, do it during rehearsal. We'll stage it afterwards, anything. But please, while we're working, while we're acting, Please do not take pictures. Because part of an actor, when he sees a camera, a still camera lens, wants to sit there and pose. You know, it, it takes you out of the moment of, with your acting. And he did it, and in the scene, my partner was shot and killed and dying in my arms. It was a very emotional scene. And it was also about three or four in the morning. And I was trying to get into it, and I thought we had a really good take going. And all of a sudden I hear, click, 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 click. click. And I did lose it. So I can understand why another actor would not want somebody with a camera on the set, especially back then when they're noisy. That's it. I've, I've, I've divulged when I've had a, a tantrum on the set. Ah. All right. Brenda Mudrag says, finally got to see what Tony looks like. Now I can put a face with a name. So for anybody who's joining us late, this is Tony Gill. He's here from across the pond from the United Kingdom. He is the, are you the president of Robert Fuller's fandom and the man extraordinaire that uh, organizes uh, convention appearances? I'm, a, I'm the head of the fandom, but I'm a member just the same. I abide by the same rules. I live by the same code as all the members in the fandom. I'm just a member of the fandom, but somebody has to make the decisions and I'm I guess I got that job for now. Yeah, but you were also a star, didn't you appear in uh, an episode called Laramie on Sundown? You know, uh, it's funny because, Darby, you did uh, Bill Tillman and the Outlaws with Wayne Shipley. And uh, I, I'm really, I, I have never done Zoom, but, but I emailed Wayne about two weeks ago because I hadn't spoken to him for a long time. And I just said, oh, I just want to catch up. And he said... Uh, why don't we do a Zoom? So I said, all right, leave it with me. I'll figure it out. So we have a Zoom on Monday, I think, with Wayne. Now you take Wayne Shipley, the guy that did Sundown, where I did the Laramie, is a guy called uh, Bob Terry. And there's a guy in England making Westerns, also called Paul Vernon. There's these three guys making these Westerns. And, and I just want to 
give a bit of a shout out to these guys because they do not walk. They walk. They're making westerns. They're not talking about making westerns. They're making westerns. And you might look at them and you might say, very good or it was a bit cheap or whatever. But these guys are putting their money where their mouth is because it comes out of their pocket. And um, a huge amount of respect to these guys. And I did, I did a, an episode uh, of Sundown with Bob Terry and uh, I played a bounty hunt. <laughs> I played an English bounty hunt. I've never acted in my life. I will tell you now, Bob Fuller gave me the gun he used as Jess Harper to use on that show. So I'm the only the only actor, non-actor in the world to use Jess Harper's gun. He provided me with a holster. Uh, had a great time doing it, but it's not a big budget thing. You know, it's a it's it's a labor of love. So again, you know, if you can look in, support these guys, give them support. Paul Vernon, Bob Terry, Wayne Shipley support these guys please help them with what they're trying to do because they are trying to keep alive a genre that we love we respect we adore and we talk about it we're here talking they're doing it they're making it so give them all the support and respect they need that's off to them and i agree absolutely but now if you had told us that we would have had the clip you know because we're so technically advanced here uh, but we should have the clip of you as the bounty hunter. I can't wait to see that. Darby, where can I see uh, Bill Tillman? Because I've, I've actually got the music. I've got the soundtrack. But I've seen the movie, and I really want to see this movie. I know Wayne will love it, and I agree. I love doing gorilla shoots. The the love and the the, the heart and the soul that goes into it is, is amazing. It's like with Ginger and her husband. Yeah. And they're just... You know, and they're young kids usually that are, are learning, and it's just, it's a whole different feel. It's really fun. Yeah, it, it's tough for people now to make a Western because, you know, it, it, I, I thought, you know, I, I watched 310 to Yuma with uh, Russell Crowe, and uh, I remembered back to 310 to Yuma with Glenn Ford. And I, I great disrespect to Russell Crowe because I know he's got a lot of fans, but come on. It, it wasn't the same kind of movie. But what it showed me was the special effects that Westerns needed to attain now. And, and that was, you know, when, when they were doing the shootout scenes at the end, the special effects were awesome in Russell Crowe's movie. And when you see what's successful in The Avengers and The Iron Man and Batman and Superman, all great movies, but it's all about computers and special effects. The Western was never about that. And um, I think 310 to Yuma did have a lesson for us all, you know, in, in the way they shot the end scenes with a guy running through the, the unbuilt buildings and the shooting. And it was, it was very, well, very well done indeed. But um, I, I don't know. If, if special effects is going to be the criteria by which we watch movies, then Westerns are they're going to struggle to come back again. You know, even in this one we're watching now, the, the, the philosophical... Talking about war, talking about this script that was written by a woman. Um, yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, yeah, they have stories to tell. And, you know, unfortunately, back then you had a good bar fight. You know, you might get a chair thrown over you. Now you're used to seeing people go through brick walls, get up and fight again. Um, so, yeah, I know. <laughs> you know, it, it is nice, like you say, go back to the simpler days and, and see some of this. I agree. I, that's why I love Westerns. Uh, Brenda Mudrack said I sent it, Darby, so I'm not sure what she's talking about unless it's her answer to your question. I think mean, um, she's, she's the one that sent the clip of me singing, I believe. Oh, there you go. And she did post it. That is right. Thank you, Brenda. Uh, Pamela Riley Pavkovich is on here. She says, you look good in purple, Tony, smiley face. And I'm very pleased to have Pamela on here because they were having issues with tornadoes. So looked like one touched down about 15 minutes from her house. So she wasn't sure she was going to get on tonight. So yay, Pamela, welcome. That's um, a Maryland for you, even with a tornado bearing down on the house, here she is. That's the kind of darlings we love. <laughs> <laughs> Ginger, you know what I'd like to do is when I, when I get to America, I couldn't do it now while I'm in England, but when I get to America, I'd like to get a watch, one of these things done 
with Derby and with Bob on together, I think that would be awesome. We get Derby's darlings and Fuller Phillies on together. I think that would be really, really good. You and you as well, I'd need your help to do that. But why don't we aim to do that when I get back to America, get these guys on together so that all the girls and all the guys who love these guys can have a chance to, to see them when we do a nice Q&A and get some questions in there. Why don't we do that? Oh, I don't know. I don't know if I want to go to the with Robert. You know, I mean. Well, I'm in even if Darby isn't. <laughs> the girls have been asking, but as you know, I don't, we're going to have to move into a coffee shop or something so we can get internet because Bob doesn't have any internet out at his ranch, does he? He's okay now, I think. I'm saying that. I'm not 100% sure, but I'm pretty sure pretty sure he's okay now he changed he changed up a little bit to get improved internet because he was having real problems with it darby uh, i mean you know me and ginger we're sitting here but we're not the reach here you're the reach here you're the, the other person these these people want to see and and talk to if we can get you and robert together i think that would be bloody awesome really that'd be fun i look forward to it we'll do that let's try and make that happen ginge we, we tr ginger we'll try and make it happen now eh? I'm on it. I'm on it, doggone it. Uh, Nancy Johnson said that was Dolla Sorrow, so she's your winner. So, Nancy, as you always know, info at DarbyHinton.com with your address so he can send you the picture. Um, Wendy Hoffman wants to know, Darby, can you share anything about John Duchette? Everyone knows his face, but not his name. Do you remember? He was the one that was hugging you when you jumped out of the wagon. I was... Five? <laughs> um, no. Was, it, was he a good hugger? Was he? A good <laughs> <laughs> he didn't drop me. I can tell you that. And I remember. <laughs> so that wasn't the third or fourth take. That was the first take. <laughs> For some reason, I remember my mom better than him. But you know, I always did like older women. Um, Karen McGowan Caddis wants to know, was this film completely in studio or some on location? Do you remember Darby? Oh, I don't know where that lake was. That doesn't, I don't think that was a universal lake or maybe that was a, a Disney ranch lake. Somebody out there might know. Um, but yeah, I mean, and a lot of the other was on a sound stage, you know, but there was a couple. Yeah, like the picture behind me, that was obviously outside. But probably anything like the dance when the wagon train was stopped. All they that could build all that on the, the wagon, stage. With the wagon in the back, the killing scene, all those, that, that's all inside. Uh, Robert let's... running down that way. He's a good horseman. But yeah, when well, Robert came down on the horse, that was outside, yeah. <laughs> Uh, Brendan Mudrack says, Darby, is that one of your special made hats? You look yes. good with it on. Yes, this is a Tom Quintana hat that he made for me for my, the Western I'm still filming. You know, we're taking a break because it's a little warm in Kansas right now. Your latest project, you can call it, latest my, project. My latest, my latest project, <laughs> um, which is a great lesson and a great story. And on that note, See how Tom, this is a brand new hat. And Tom did such a great job of making it look like I've had it for years and worn it for years. I did notice on the wagon train, they look pretty sharp, you know? They're very clean and I mean, they could go out on the town um, instead of having- well you, well, you know, it's an interesting story because Jess Harper was always filthy. His, was, his clothes were filthy. He was not allowed, Robert was not allowed on pain of being fired to get dirty on wagon train. He was told he could not do that. He had to remain clean, his shirts clean, his jeans clean, everything, nothing like what he was in Laramie. He was not allowed to get dirty. It was, wasn't permitted. I, I noticed that, I'm a cleaner, but, and I gotta tell you, I am still picking dirt out from my nails from this, the one I just did, because the makeup woman was like putting the dirt on the hands and she really jammed it under my nails. So I guess I gotta wait for that one to go out. <laughs> but yeah, I, I before seeing rolling around in the dirt, throwing stuff, and Tom called me, now you make sure you put some of that Kansas dirt on the hat and stuff. I'm like, okay, Tom. 
Hey, I want to just, sorry, a bit ginger. I wanted to ask, how's the cold? Are you okay now? Me? Oh, yeah. I, I'm much better. Darby. We're, uh, yeah, we're coming out of it. And then again, I'm an actor from that age. Where? From that age. Now I know why the weathermen do this. <laughs> and there's a camera on me. Can we show them what's going on? And then I'm <laughs> <laughs> how do you feel? I passed out on the set of Daniel Boone, right in the middle of a take, passed out, woke up, and they were taking me, carrying me to the hospital on the lot, because uh, I had mono, with about 103 or above uh, fever, 104 or something. And uh, they gave me the next two days off, and then I had to go back to work. But I was like, mono? That's a kissing disease. Come on, I haven't had it done. But anyway. You're a heartbreaker then, Darby. <laughs> as soon as we take the night and we wrap up the night, I'll get my dad put a nice pack on. And, you know. Okay, Cassie Turner says it was filmed in Kanab, Utah and in Wildwood Regional Park in Thousand Oaks, California. I would not be interested if I did this in Kanab. That doesn't look like Kanab. Those trees. I'm kind of you were old. five. What do you remember? <laughs> but I know Kanab now. <laughs> right? I don't yeah, remember. But, yeah, right? yeah, but trees match trees, Darby, and <laughs> rocks match rocks, and water matches water. So <laughs> Kanab's got that, you know, it's either <laughs> desert or pine or I don't know. Somebody will find the answer, I am sure. Well, Cassie just did, and you're disputing it. So. I'm not. She said it was either, either or, not exactly where. No, she said and. She said oh. it was filmed in Kanab, Utah, and in Wildwood Regional Park in Thousand Oaks, California. Maybe the parts that you're in or not in were in Kanab. How do you know? The regional Park. It'd be interesting to go and see if they have a big lake. I don't know where the regional park is. I don't know. Well, somebody inquiry minds will figure it out for you. Uh, Pamela Riley Pavkovich says, Tony, you are the bomb. Great idea to do a viewing party with Darby and Mr. Fuller. So you already got a couple of votes for yay. So That's get on that. Beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> okay, I guess well, let's go ahead and get back to it. Um, I've got a few more comments here, but we'll get back to it. This next segment is 2446. So we'll be back about a uh, quarter after nine. So, Tony, we don't know. I was going to say. No, you won't. <laughs> You'll be will. back about quarter after two in the morning. I'm going to stay. I'm staying with you. <laughs> you ain't getting rid of me yet. <laughs> I love it, Tony. A partier. All right, let's go. Oh, no, Mr. Hale. I have no hesitation in the world standing up for him even though the way we met might make you think I should have reservations. But to explain that, I'd have to tell you my story. I guess you could call it my story, but it wouldn't be the same without Harry D. And I'm afraid Harry would have been a different man altogether, had it not been for every. So I guess you might say that what makes this story mine, what makes me me, includes pieces of them. Pieces that cleaved under me like iron filings under a magnet. You know, I call the day we all met the day of the three cyclones because three times that day my will was turned upside down and tossed about like a straw in the wind. It's hard to explain. It's almost as if what happened was intended. You see, before that day, uh, I was an orderly man. I was almost 45. I was a bachelor, lived alone, didn't know I was lonely. Not until Benji came into my life had I known how lonely I'd been before him. You see, my town was uh, like a small puddle. But I was a pretty big frog in that puddle, and I thought I was going to go on croaking in that puddle till the end of time. But even when I awoke that morning, the wind was beginning to gather for that first cyclone. Oh, the day started like any other day. I got up early as usual, and left my house and walked toward my store. I did it every morning for a constitutional. 
<laughs> Folks said they could set their clocks, but for about 15 minutes, it was like any other day. Then, then it ceased to be like any other day and became instead the day that changed my life. You mean the first time you saw Harry Deal, he robbed you? Yeah. I admit it sounds like a bad beginning, but that was only the beginning. <laughs> That's right, Ben. Only the beginning. I didn't look like I could imagine robbery, let alone commit it. Wait a minute. Um, did I do that? No, sir. I was born with it. Anybody would have thought I was the one who had been knocked over the head. <laughs> was this when you first began to feel responsible, Ben? And guilty? Guilty for having enough money to be worth robbing in the first place. You come with me? Come on. I hated to see a young man like that starting out on the wrong foot. And a lame foot to boot. I thought if life was so cruel to him as to make him steal, maybe some kindness. But even as I was wondering what to say, the second cyclone was beginning to blow. Ben! 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 <laughs> it was Colin Dunn. Colin was the town drunk. But I'd never seen him this far along so early in the morning. Come on, I own you two. Colin, you're I'm drunk. Father Abraham, 600,000 more. <laughs> drunk, is it? Read this. At first, I thought the blow on the head had affected my brain, but I could read clear enough. What I held in my hand was a draft list, and my name was on it. Where'd you get this? From the conscription office. It's a draft list. And uh, that new federal man uh, pinned another one like it on the wall outside. The country's in fine shape. The government is a darling, an organized, efficient darling. They've drafted Benjamin Engel into the army. <laughs> the army. Ben, what are you going to do? <sighs> Lose some weight, I guess. Ben, you're not thinking of going. Why, you, man, it's all a mistake. It, it's, a, it's a federal fox paw. That's French for putting your foot in your mouth. Say, you're a new one in this town, aren't you? Ben, you're over age. Three more days. Three more days what? Three more days, I'll be over age. Three more days. Oh, to give a government man some ink, and we'll get to... Ben, where did you meet him? Oh, I haven't met him. You haven't what? I haven't met him. He hit me over the head and tried to rob me, but I haven't met him. Robbed you? Robbed? Hey, stop, think! He's a thief! He's a thief! Stop it! Colin! Already things were beginning to happen as if they had a life of their own. I wouldn't have stopped him. I would have let him go. But the wind was rising again for the third storm, and what I wanted didn't seem to make any difference anymore. Ben, it doesn't make any difference whether you press charges or not. This man is Harry Deal. He stole $293 and a buggy whip from Josiah Ames in Arborville. And Josiah Ames does want to press charges. You didn't think this was his first offense, did you? Oh, I know. He looks like butter wouldn't melt in his mouth. He looks like an angel. But not all angels stayed in heaven, Ben. Harry, 
Is it true what the judge says? That you've robbed before? Of course it's true. Ben, you'll forgive me. But not having a son of your own makes you a gull for every young fellow with a hard luck story. Well, I remember the time those horse thieves came through here. The judge gave me the key to you, Ben, when he said that. Every man has a secret lock, and if you can find the key to open that lock, the treasure inside is ready for the picking. The judge is right. I, uh, this isn't the first time, Mr. Ingle. I've just never been much good. I couldn't seem to learn right and wrong like other children do. You see, I never had... I never knew my father. My mother died when I was six. Well, you see? You see, Hiram? It's out of your hands, Ben. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Besides, I understand you already have enough to worry about. <laughs> I understand his name has come up in the draft. <laughs> Here, we've got to get him over to Arborville. <clears throat> Wait a minute, wait a minute. And there is one thing you can do for this man if you're so bent on it, and you can do something for yourself at the same time. Hire him to substitute for you in the draft. You know I don't hold with that substitution clause. You pay him $300. He pays Josiah Ames $293. He doesn't have to go to jail, you don't have to go to war, and <laughs> I'll throw in the buggy whip. It's a way out for men with means and also cowards. And I don't thank you for nominating me, Hiram. All right, it was just an idea. Go on, get him out of here. The jail's the best place for him. Oh. Who's that? My wife. Wife? You see, he has a wife. You didn't say you had a wife. She's going to have a baby. Baby? Yeah, you're going to be all right, young lady. How you can't go to jail if you're going to have a baby? Your child can't have a jailbird for a father? I don't know. How do I go about the substitution? Harry, how did you know? I know his kind. I mean, about the baby? Harry Deal, do you agree to substitute for Benjamin Engel? Good. All right. There's the $300 for his debt. There's $293. And a buggy whip. Uh, yeah, you take this. No, 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 no. You're going to need it with your husband gone and all now. My name's Engel. Anybody will town will tell you where Ben Engel lives. All right, Hiram. You got the papers ready? Well, let's have them. Oh, Harry, I'm going to miss you. you. You won't get myself killed. Oh, no. I won't get myself killed. Not when I have so much to live for. You mean the baby? Yeah. Yeah. Why, I never had anybody substitute for me before. And when Harry marched off to war, in my place, I felt... I felt like I wanted to call him back. <laughs> if it didn't sound so foolish, I could say that what I felt was fear. But I, I couldn't call him back. After that first minute, I forgot that I'd wanted to.
Now, I took Evie home after Harry left because she had to have a place to have the baby. Now, I didn't know anything about having babies except that a woman shouldn't have to be alone at that time. And I did everything I could. I got the best doctor in town. I got her a nurse. And then the baby was born. It was a boy. And Evie named him Benji after me. <laughs> it was then I realized how lonely my life had been. Here, yeah, life was a big river, and I'd spent most of mine in the backwater thinking it was the main stream. It was that baby's birth that swept me out in the current. It wasn't just naming him after me that made me part of the big flow. A name didn't make him mine, and, well, I didn't need that kind of continuity anymore. But with that baby's birth, Mr. Hale, I could see that it was life. That was the important thing. That the real kinship wasn't with bloodlines, but just with blood. So I guess you could say that when that baby was born, and I looked at it, uh, I got a peek at immortality. <laughs> I wrote. All that to Harry in a letter. I don't know if he ever got it. Oh, yes, Ben. I got the letter. If you needed any other reason to fight well and forget your past and return home to us whole, in body and in spirit, you have that reason now. In your son. Legacy? Maybe. Who died? Nobody. Yet. Cover the 20. The time passed and the boy grew. And the war went on. I worried a lot about Harry. He didn't write much. Not that we expected it. So whatever news we got was first and sinking in the belly of... Uncle Ben! Uncle Ben! Uncle Ben! Oh, Benji! Ow. And sometimes a hooping and a hollering, like the time we learned about the metal. He's all right, Evie. He's a hero. Did you hear that, boy? Your daddy's a hero. Glory, hallelujah. Glory. Evie, Harry's a hero. He got himself a medal. Yeah. For what? For brain me. That's what. Here, read it. What did he do? He killed the ribs. He killed a hundred thousand ribs. He shot them dead, dead, dead. Benji! Glory, glory, Evie, hallelujah. it's a war. Glory. It's hard for a woman to understand war. Glory. Maybe it should be harder for men to understand it. But we all, men, women, and children, understood when the war was over. Then the men began to come back home. They'd gone away young and tall and whole, and they came back maimed and stooped and old. But we, we were lucky. There he was, just as he had gone away, except for that little limp. Almost as if having that kept the rest of him inviolate. sorrow because they were running away from me. It was then and there I decided what I was going to do. Yes, Ben. You decided. You decided, all right. What do you mean, Ben? I mean, what do you mean you've already decided? I, I wouldn't think of it. Think of what? 
letting Ben here go out west all by himself. I mean, what with the Indians and all of them? I'm a full-grown man, Harry. Right, right. That just it, Ben. That's exactly it. What do you mean? Well, I simply mean that when a full-grown man like yourself keeps growing, uh, he grows... Uh, Old? Old. Harry. Harry, you think I'm too old to take my own wagons out west, is that it? Harry, tell him no. Oh, that's all right, Evie. I can see how he would think I was too old, and you too, Evie. Why, when I was your age, I'd look at a person 20 years older than I and think he had one foot in the grave already. But you see, son, it's all a matter of what point you're looking from. Uh, Harry, you watch. I'm as strong as an ox. Show them how strong you are. Here, boy, you want to be thrown to the stars? You want to go to the low stars? Let's go low. Oh, boy, you want to go to the high stars? The high, high, oh, high. You want to go to the really high? That's enough. <laughs> Did you see, Uncle Ben? Those were the highest stars in the sky, weren't they? Yes, Benji, I saw. That's pretty high, pretty high. Say good night. Good night, Uncle Ben. Good night, Benji. Good night, baby. Mm. See you tomorrow. <clears throat> Hurry, how could you? You've hurt him. Ben? Yeah. Ben, <laughs> ben Heavy here says that I've hurt you. I, I haven't hurt you, have I, Ben? Oh, no, Harry, of course you haven't. You haven't hurt me. No. Well, I didn't mean to. You know that. I, I, I just want to help you. Yes, and I want to help you. I want you and Evie to get a fresh start here alone. I've set a certain amount of money aside. No, 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 sir. No, sir, Bob. But Harry, I No, I'm... take your money after what you've done for me, my family. It's a two-way street. No, sir, no. I want to help you, Ben. And Evie here, Ben, we, uh, we both want to help you, both of us. Now, don't you want us to go with you? Yes, son. Well, anything else in the world. Good. Good. Good, Ben. Fine, fine. Then that's what is decided. Oh, we'll jump into the wagon and we'll all take a ride. <laughs> oh. We've tired him. Oh, no, Harry, I, I'm not tired. It's uh, just I want to go up to my room. Good night, Harry. Evie. Looks like I've gained myself a family. What are you trying to do? What do you mean? You know what I mean, telling Ben he's old? Well... Ben's not old. He's not young. Not like you are young. Not like I am young. Oh, Harry. Ben's been good to Benji and to me. I'm not. I'm not good to you. You're not fair. Every th time I want to say something, you always... You never let me say it. All right. Say it. I'm not touching you. Say it. Well, what? Uh... I just don't want you to hurt Ben. How is my helping him going to hurt him? I don't know. The 
that all you have to say? Oh, Harry. Harry, you are different, aren't you? I mean, you're not like you were before. You're through with stealing. The war's over. You're through with killing, aren't you? And if I'm not, would it make any difference to you? Hmm? What? No. Oh, no, Helen, help me. Oh, no, I wouldn't. No. Why are you crying? No need to cry. Just because we're all going to take a trip west on the wagon train. So it was decided. That's the way it's been up till tonight. Yes, till tonight. talk long everybody i promise we'll get right back to the final segment there we go yeah just some music is, is we gotta see, see I, I have to say young young clue looks a little bit like nicholas cage I he's kind of got that nicholas cage vibe going on oops sorry tony let me start to bring you on here yeah yeah but boy he's intense in this this is a pretty dark story for the times aren't they isn't it no, he's, Engels is such a nice guy. How could he do that? It's dark. <laughs> Clue was in uh, one episode of Laramie, you know, and he played a similar type of slimy <laughs> character in, in that episode, too. You know, a guy telling one story but living another was very, he was good at that. He did a good job. He's a pretty intense actor, I have to say. I'm very impressed. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You know, here I got one one other picture to share, and that's this one, where I did a thing with Clue. See him up there? And Dan, so many good. There's Robert and everybody. Yeah, yeah. And at the time that I did this, I didn't even realize that I had played his son or anything else. I mean, it's it's really interesting. <laughs> So you had a good card. Yeah, you were throwing me up in the air. Don't you remember? But you had a, you had a really good part uh, from what you know from what I've seen so far. It, that was a really good role you had in 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 Wagon Train. Gave me lines and everything. Yes. Yeah, yeah, a lot of lines, a lot. I mean, you were doing a lot of stuff. Did hey, did you get paid? Do you get paid for that? <laughs> uh, my mom probably did. And singing. I love the fact that, you know, that's what kids got to do in those days. Jump down the stairs, climb up the stairs, jump down the stairs. <laughs> no Game Boy, no computers. No, no, no. <laughs> so when Clue was throwing you up in the air, did that bring back any memories? Do you remember that at all? Because yeah. that so could have gone horribly wrong really quick. <laughs> 
Yeah, hopefully they didn't have to do too many takes of it. I'm looking, I don't have a picture. I remember a picture of them putting makeup on me on those stairs. But I think I'm getting more memories from the pictures than actually watching the show. Um, but no, I don't. Hi. You're, you're, you're useless, Darby. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Uh, Cindy M says, I found the Marshall DVD at a home improvement store. I'm hoping Darby will sign the cover for me. Yes. Uh, depends on where we are. Uh, when I talked back with Morgan Mason, I told him when we you know, aired the episode that he was in, The Little Prince, it was funny because when we did the scene by the river and he said a line, I knew my next line. And, you know, obviously how many decades ago that was. So it's really funny how the mind and the memory works. Uh, some things, you know, come right back and other things, no, I, I don't really remember being tossed in the air at the time. <laughs> Maybe it was a stunt man. It's a stunt kid. <laughs> a, little, a little person was a little person your stunt person? <laughs> Billy Barty being thrown in the air. Uh, yes, Brenda Mudrat commented, watch when Darby sings, he gets louder. And that's true. He actually, you went up a whole key, I think, too, on the second round. <laughs> yeah, not better, louder. And higher, <laughs> and higher. <laughs> I thought better, better, no better. Oh, Tony, you're too got nice. All right, well, we should probably see the rest of this, because it is getting late for Tony, and I want him to get his beauty sleep. All right, well, here we go with the final segment of Wagon Train. This one's 2231. Van Engel doesn't think he feels gilly the way he's standing up for him. Van Engel's a good man. Yeah, good as gold, which he's got plenty of, too. You're both right, you know. Van Engel is a good man, a very fine man. Nobody knows that better than I do. And a good man always pays his debt. What kind of debts? It's a personal kind of thing. Most debts are personal. So we uh, just don't talk about it much. Yeah, why not? Oh, I... A lot of people wouldn't understand, I think. Have you tried to make them understand? Well, I... I uh... No, no, I haven't. <laughs> you see, some people think the only men who bought substitutes during the war were cowards. Cowards with money, of course. So Engel bought a substitute, huh? You? Yeah. You said Ben Engel was a good man. Well, I... Well, at least he's a rich one. A rich man's war, but a poor man's fight. Hey, Deal? You see, that's why we don't talk about it. That's, uh, that's exactly why. In our case, uh, it was different, much different than that. How different? Well, I mean, uh, how different? Well, I, uh, I needed the money for one thing. Well, a poor man always needs money. No, no, you don't understand, Mr. Jinks. You see, uh, Ben did so much else for me. He, uh, well, he even took my wife home to live with him. Oh, my God. Oh, your wife? He means his wife and baby. Oh, no, no, she didn't have the baby then. Well, uh, when did she have the baby? Well, I, I wasn't there, of course, uh, but Ben wrote me a letter, the most wonderful letter. Let's see, I, uh, I'd been fighting about a year, and... <gasps> oh, well, it, it, uh, during the war, it took Mail a long time to, uh... Well, I mean, I'm sure that... And they named the baby Benji. Oh, no. No, 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 Mrs. Jinx, uh, you're wrong. You... No, all of you, you're wrong. I, I, I can tell you Ben Engel is a fine man, a good man. And he'll make you a good friend. And he'll run a good business. A very fine business, the most honest business in the West. You can always trust Ben Engel. Always. Mr. Jinx, Ben's got wagons back there full of everything you could possibly need. There's nothing I could need so much that I'd buy it from a man like that. But I'm sure you're wrong. Ben? Ben? 
It's been here. I'm sorry, ma'am, but Ben ain't here. You'll just have to put up with your husband. <clears throat> Come on, we've got to pick up Benji and put him to bed. Did he always limp? What? Harry Deal, did he always limp? I don't know. Why? It would be interesting to know. Lucifer was said to have had a limp after his fall. Night, Ben. Good night, Miss Dale. Harry. Harry! Listen to me. What are you up to? And don't tell me it's nothing, because I know better. Do you, Abby? Yes. Hmm. Well, how do you know? From the very beginning, from the very first time I saw you, every time you did something wrong, I felt, I felt dirty. What is it? What is it? What, what did they mean when they said that I'd have to make do with my husband? Well, who else would I ever... Don't. Look, don't touch me. Don't. Look. Now, you tell me. You tell me. What have you put in their minds? with you? Was something left out of you? 
All you know how to do is to, to use people. You don't love. You don't even hate. You just, you just use people. And you use them up until there's, there's just nothing left. I wanted to... You knew. You knew. I'm sorry for Mr. McLeod, and I'm sorry for you, Harry. I'll have to turn you over to Mr. Hale. I don't think so, Ben. I've given my word. I don't think your word means very much right now. What do you mean? I told them you bought a substitute during the war. Mr. Hale knows that. I told him myself. Hmm, but they think you bought me as a substitute so you could... because of Evie. You told them that? No, I only told them the facts. They thought of that themselves. <clears throat> Haven't you ever thought of it, Ben? All those years... I was away, and Evie was in your house. Didn't you ever look on her with more than fatherly eyes, Ben? Harry. Didn't you ever look on my son with fatherly eyes? Ben, Ben, don't listen to him. Ben, stop it. Can't you see what he's trying to do? Stop it. <sighs> Harry, what is it you're trying to do? Don't you know? I'm asking. We're in a wrestling match, Ben. I'm about to let you throw yourself. I'm asking for an answer. And I'm giving you one. Look at him, Evie. Look. They never believe you. Even though you look straight in the face and tell them. They never believe you. Ben, look at him. He means it. Oh, 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 you make it so easy. Easy. Just like they did out there. They were ready to believe the worst, you know. They wanted to believe the worst. It's inside of you. I don't have to destroy you. I just have to open you up. And you'll destroy yourselves. You're a devil. Why? Why am I a devil? Why do you want to destroy me? I want what you have. But I offer it. You offered me a pittance. I want it all. It would have been all of yours in time. Why should I wait for you to die, Ben? Why, indeed. When I'm dead already. <clears throat> you said it. Ben, no, it's Mac that's dead already. And Harry is responsible. I'm going to go tell Mr. Hale. You're telling nothing. The man is dead. Whether we tell or not is a fact that won't keep. 
It will keep till I'm ready. You'll keep it till then. Why? Mama! <laughs> Mama! I'm sorry. Don't apologize, Ben. That's just what he'd want you to do. He'd want you to say that you were sorry for something that you, you shouldn't be sorry for. But I... Ben. I'm the sort of woman who... who has always been what the man she is around thinks she is. To Harry, I was... Only to you. Only to you was I ever... ever a person... I mean, just a person. I know that now. Please, please don't apologize for that. <coughs> Why are you crying, Benji? Hmm? You think I'll give it to you if you cry? Hmm? Well, then what use is crying, Benji? Hmm? Benji, now listen. Do you want this? Do you? All right. Then take it. Take it. <laughs> no, take it. Take it. Benji, when you want something, you have to learn to take it, baby. That's enough. You should have acted like you didn't care, Benji. Then when my back was turned... I said that's enough. Stay where you are. Ben, I don't intend to be taken into custody by Mr. Hale or to stand trial here or anywhere else. I'm going to leave the train. Now, that means I'll need some money, and that means I'll need some time. You are going to give me both. You are also going to give me a bill of sales for these wagons, and you are going to give me the title to the store back home right now. What are you going to give me? My wife. Of course, the good people on this train already believe you have her, but I want them to believe that only just now have I seen the truth. And that's why I had to leave. You are going to help them with this belief, Ben. Complete fool. Not quite. I'm going to get him. No, Abby. No, what makes you think that I'll do all these things? Because. Because you've begun to doubt your motives, Ben. Because I have you off balance, and now you're ready for the fall. I don't care about myself. But you do care about Benji here. Now, now you are the complete fool, Ben. What are you going to do? Take the boy with me. But there's no way you can keep them from following you. Ben will find a way. Why do you want Benji? With him in my hands, I can maneuver you from any distance, Ben. Because you'll be thinking, if you do everything I ask, Maybe someday you can get the boy back before I've begun to sully his soul. <laughs> My lever. Give me a lever, and I can lift the world. And what are you going to do? The only thing he can do.
I weren't in such a hurry, I'd, uh, I'd have liked for you to fight a little. You almost take the enjoyment out of it. Doing everything just as I expected. Did you expect this? What do you think you're doing? The only thing I can do. You said it yourself. But uh, you can't kill. That's uh, my way. You, you don't believe in that, Ben. That won't be an answer for you. You're on the side of life. Ben, believe me, it, it won't be an answer. You have... <laughs> to do it, Mr. Hale. Harry, Harry was evil. Ben killed evil. I killed Harry. I don't know about evil. He was a taker of life, so I took his life. Mr. Hale, do two wrongs ever make a right? No, but sometimes it's as close as we can come. I took his way. to learn to come closer than that. <coughs> Miss Deal, take care of the boy. He'll, he'll be frightened. Go to jail? What? Did they hang him? Well, I don't know. They all had hanging nooses in their, you know, in their oh, wagons I, that they were super handy when they were gonna hang the other guy. <laughs> it's well, twenty to three. I know. <laughs> yeah, but it was worth it, Tony. You were celebrating Robert Fuller's birthday. What the heck? You can brag about that. There you go. <laughs> you know that was a great episode. Really good. And John McIntyre just shines every time, doesn't he? Just brilliant. Oh, no, but what a dark story. My goodness. That's Darby, yeah. I'm surprised you didn't, when you met Clue Gulliger, that you didn't get chills the first time he talked to you. He was so creepy to you. I, I've been like, oh, my God, what a... <laughs> it's surprising you didn't remember him that way. That's funny. I love when he walked in and they had the, you know, the light from underneath. And he, oh, yeah. <laughs> I know, like the devil <laughs> shot. It was like, bum, bum, bum. But when he grabbed her toe, he's like, get it. You want it? You want it? You want it? <laughs> <laughs> I almost thought I looked like I was about to laugh uh, during that. 
I'm sure that wasn't really you crying. I'm pretty sure they added that in post. <laughs> well, I don't think I can cry on cue. <laughs> <laughs> that was a that was a whiny cry though. <laughs> That's like a Sorry, I wasn't cry. good at crying. <laughs> you know, I was just having too good of a time. Oh my God, the next time you see Clue, you're going to have to be like, dude, I don't know why I'm not terrified of you. Oh, yeah. Yeah. oh no, Clue and I are going to have a big talk next time we meet up. <laughs> How did that not scar your childhood? I'm just saying. <laughs> and I, found, I found that picture. I think I brought it up. Oh, wow. Uh, Who's that on the ground? Look at that. <laughs> God, is that you, Tony? <laughs> and he's been you know what? Before. <laughs> you know what? They actually, they actually, those five people actually took me out to Surrender Field and made me surrender. And <laughs> to celebrate. I mean, they were celebrating 4th of July. I was supposed to. <laughs> Wait, was that the right picture? <laughs> Where'd y'all get the outfits? The, the uniforms are great. Where did those come from? We were at a national park. It was and, in Williamsburg. Yeah. The museum. Oh, oh, the actual Williams. Oh my gosh. And they let y'all dress up in their outfits. That's hysterical. Mm. So who's the lady? Who's the girl? Heather Lowe, Andrew Prime's wife. She's okay. lovely. She's a super girl. She, Heather's an actress as well. She's she's done some a lot of stuff. Nice. You were actually where, like you said, Washington surrendered. I have that movie. I actually have that movie of you, Tony. Of the British hold, handing it over to the Yank. Ah, oh, if I'd known that. <laughs> That's not good. <laughs> and I'll keep that tape. <laughs> yeah, I kind of figured you would. <laughs> Can I have a flashlight here to put the light underneath me? And I'll keep that <laughs> I know that was such a that was such a sleepy hollow thing, wasn't it? Like that when you would tell the ghost stories and you hold the flashlight under your face. I know. <laughs> a little obvious there, but you, Darby, how old were you when you did that? Five. No, uh, oh, it's a, okay. Do you remember? Because a lot of people I've seen the comments come up about this the shots inside the wagons. They just look like huge. They look like hotel rooms, those wagons. <laughs> it's so nicely laid out with the quilts, all the different quilts. And none of the food, provisions, all the stuff you need on a wagon going across country. Yeah. <laughs> Movie magic. <laughs> That's what it is. Yeah. Well, it's interesting that you tell us the inside that they, it was actually a choice to have everybody very clean and very pristine on the wagon train. I don't know why that was, but obviously it was a, a, a choice. Now, I, I can't remember the, the director's name, but he actually went to Bob and he pleaded with him, pleaded with him not to get dirty. And he said, if you, if you do, I'm going to be fired. And I can't remember who it was now, but there was an instruction, Robert Fuller is not to get, because Rob, Robert's, you know, he, got dirty he rolled around he got dirty but they said and you can see it when in his outfit on wagon train he's pristine and, um uh but a, just a different thing i don't know why either i thought it was getting dirty was good yeah but maybe in this country, the classy city people that you know stayed fancy while they rode the wagon train <laughs> <laughs> they weren't a bunch yeah. of bums that were getting in fist fights. They were the, you know, the classic pristine <laughs> people. <laughs> well, and then, and they went into their big palatial, uh, you know, yeah. at the end. What they called it, was, see, they started glamping even back then. <laughs> I mean, how big was the train in Wild Wild West, too, all right? You went in there, there was the pool table, the, you know. Hey, yeah. don't pick on my train in Wild Wild West, Darby. That's off limits. Uh, <laughs> Darby, I'm with you. I'm with you. Man <laughs> uh, let's see, Darby, did you remember having any interaction with Bob for the set for this app? No, nope. if I didn't remember having an interaction with Clue. <laughs> <laughs> he I didn't know. have a clue. Yeah, I get it. Ha -ha. No, I told, I told Bob today on the phone, I was talking to him. I, you know, I didn't know we would work together. 
They were, uh, I don't think he remembered either. Well, they conceivably could have filmed those those scenes separately, so he Absolutely. probably weren't on set when he did them. It's possible. Yeah, no, um, he was never in a scene that I was in. No. Um, Peggy and Nicole say, "Oh my goodness, Darby, you are too adorable. Great job of delivering your lines, even then." Except for the crying, I didn't. I didn't buy that. As in post. Uh, well, Brenda, I want to say hi to Peggy and Nicole out there. It's, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing you girls in uh, Williamsburg. I have a feeling they're looking forward to it too. We'll see them in Canab, so they get around. <laughs> yeah, they do. Yeah, they go. And Garrett, they, Garrett there too, yeah. Yeah, and they just gave me a list today of all the people that helped uh, raise all the money to get the plaque for my father in Canab. So that's, that's really special. That's a special family. Yay yeah, to everybody nice, who nice, donated nice, nice. and, and yeah, yay nice. to Peggy and Nicole for doing that. That was awesome. Uh, Brenda Mudrack says, dig the rope robe Darby is wearing. <laughs> uh, Pam Gauss wants to know, Darby, when you were very young like this, how much dialogue did you have to memorize at a time? Anything that I had to say. Was it, was it like a day at a time, like whatever you were shooting that day or and you would memorize the next oh, yeah, day? No, or would it'd, you... be, it'd, be the, it'd be driving to the studio. My mom would, in the car, read me the lines a couple of times. <laughs> uh, Brenda Mudrack agrees with me and he cries too. I felt sorry for Darby when Clue took his toy away and made him cry. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Pamela Riley Pavkovich says Harry Deal is a far cry from Emmett Riker on the Virginian for sure. So for those of you who are also Virginian fans, uh, Pamela Riley Pavkovich also says, loved your singing, Darby. There's going to be one. <laughs> I was going to say, she's out surprised she didn't put, but don't quit your day job. <laughs> <laughs> I told you, they tried to get me singing on an album once via Bobby Sherman, via all these, you know, young actors. Yeah. And I got there singing a little further from the mic. A little, <laughs> back a little further. I backed up, got in the car, and went home. Oh my gosh. All right. Uh, Cindy Musek says they made those wagons look like you could square dance inside. <laughs> That's a lot of space. Glamping was king back then. What are you going to do? Oh, and I love the wagon train was so big. Oh, yeah, get those planks out for the dance floor. And, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Every wagon train has to have a good dance floor. Well, they did have the guy who had two wagons for his mercantile, so I guess he had them on hand. <laughs> who knows? <laughs> uh, Peggy and Nicole say, wow, Darby, you were such an important part of this episode. Aw. I did like uh, point, I will say. <laughs> Cassie Turner says, no wonder Clue didn't want any pictures taken. He's crazy. Ha ha. <laughs> he does do good crazy, I have to say. He still reminds me of Nicolas Cage, which is funny. Uh, Peggy and Nicole say, Darby, you absolutely broke our hearts. Aww. Well, you were crying. We felt bad. Uh, Brenda Mudrack says, thank you, Tony, for giving up sleep to do this for us and let us talk to you. So, yay for Tony and his three. Yay for Tony. <laughs> I'll four, give you an address. I'm running there now. Time for you to I, get up, Tony. <laughs> I know. I had eggs, eggs and sausage for breakfast. <laughs> eggs and sausage for breakfast. I'm not going to go to bed now. I'm just going to cook breakfast. Tony, you're, you you're retired. What do you got to get up for? You're retired. I don't have to get up for anything, no. I just... <laughs> Have yourself Good a question. I ask myself. <laughs> a couple of bangers and a little marmite, you know, on the toast, and you're out of there. Right? <laughs> Man alive! There's a camera. I had marmite today. I had marmite today. <laughs> Me? I, what am I? I know. I know these things. Tony, <laughs> it was so great for you to be here. Um, uh, as Robert's uh, uh, right hand man on his birthday to honor him. To tell us all these inside stories to the darlings and dudes, I love it. I can't wait to actually see you in person and buy you that big right steak on. dinner because I have ordered steak in England and yeah. 
<laughs> well, listen, it's really been nice being here. I've thoroughly enjoyed it. I've enjoyed seeing you both again. And I'm looking forward to getting back to America. I'm looking forward to getting back to the festivals and uh, and the great times we're going to have together. I mean, it's just been so long, too long, and we've got to do it again. So we got Canab at the end of August. We've got Williamsburg in November. November. We and then we have the Midwest Nostalgia Festival next year, next June. But we also you have the yeah. Cowboy Way. Cowboy Way. Yep, yep, yep. Is that in October? They can go to darbyhinton.com. I got a calendar that will tell it all. Ginger, once again, I want to thank you so much. You, well, you wait, like I got two things I got to finish. You know, you always cut me off early, Darby. One is <laughs> Michelle Butler was in an accident, but she's okay but she's in a lot of pain and in physical therapy. So I wanted to thank Michelle for tuning in tonight and let her know we're all sending her good vibes and, and yeah, she really feels better and uh, quick recovery. And the other thing is, is that they're posting the Johnny Crawford celebration, the edited version of it tomorrow. It's going to hit both the Johnny Crawford legacy page at the same time that Rob words word on Westerns is going to post it. So you can catch it on either one, but they're actually posting that tomorrow, then you can enjoy a really nice tribute and celebration of Johnny Crawford. Um, they've added in some pictures and some really good speeches and it's uh, put together a really, really nice piece and it's about an hour plus long. So again, that's gonna hit Word on Westerns and www.johnnycrawfordlegacy.com. You can see it on either we can share or we should just let them go to the legacy uh, we'll post it on your page tomorrow. So I'll can you, if, if Stacy's still you, on, go ahead. Can you either post it in the fandom or send it to me, send the link to me, and I'll put it on tomorrow? Well, if you don't mind, Stacy uh, Stacy can post it on both if that's okay. Stacy's fine. Yeah, if Stacy okay. wants, great, Stacy, you do that. That's sweet. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you. So, Stacy, if you can put it on um, the Robert Fuller fandom page and then also post it in the Darby's Darlings and Dudes page, that great. would be That's perfect. fantastic. Perfect. And anywhere that anybody wants to share it personally on their page, I think you can find Word on Westerns on YouTube. Just search Word on Westerns. And then the Johnny Crawford one is just johnnycrawfordlegacy.com. So. So on that note, Darby, oh, so, oh, but next week, for those of you, for next week, we have to say this again, we have Angela and Veronica Cartwright. So we're gonna show the Daniel Boone episode, The Choosing, which is Veronica Cartwright's favorite Daniel Boone episode. So this is her third time being on the show. And Angela and Billy Mooney put together a new book where they got all these cooking, uh, all the pictures from the studio and stuff. We're gonna talk about that, that's coming up. Um, and I think Veronica had a movie coming out too that we're talking about. Anyway, wait. tune in next week, 7.30 Eastern Standard Time, uh, 4.30 Pacific Standard Time, Thursday night for Angela and Veronica Cartwright. Tony, we cannot thank you enough. I don't know which direction you're in. <laughs> Tony, we can't thank you enough <laughs> for being the here. It's wonderful <laughs> to see you. Please send our love to Robert Fuller. Tell him happy, happy, Absolutely. happy birthday from all of us. We love him. We love everything Absolutely. he's doing. And can't wait Good to get, get those hugs. Good night, everybody. Thanks for being here. Bye. Thank you Stay so safe. much for having me. Thank you. Good night, all. God bless. Bye.